Hi everyone, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to do some metallic watercolor swatching and a quick freehand watercolored floral card. So here are three new sets of metallic watercolors. I had these on my wish list and I ended up getting them for Christmas. So thank you for that. You know who got these for me. Um, but anyway, I have some swatches here that I'm going to share with you. So I'm just going to go through the process of swatching these both on white and black watercolor cardstock and I will show you how they look. So the way that I like to swatch and use my watercolor, um, metallic watercolors usually, is with these water brush pens. I get them from Arteza and they're my favorite and I like to just drip some water on them and give them a minute to kind of um, soak in the water and soften up the paints. And then I will come back and actually swatch them all out, um, each of the three sets. Uh, on the respective paper. So I started with this gold set um, on the white and got a few in and then I realized I should be doing it on the black as well so I don't have to like clean the brush double the amount of time. So I do figure that out in a moment. <laughs> you can see the second gold is much um, more saturated or more rich. It's kind of got almost an orange tone here at this point I realized like yeah I need to just uh, start doing this. So I'm going to kind of start in the middle and then go backwards on these first three and then on all the next ones and I'll do them on both. But um, I see a lot of people using these golds. Now, do I already have metallic watercolors in my stash? Yes. Does that mean I still wanted more? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted them. Um, I like the variety. Uh, I like having options to choose from, but obviously you don't need many different <laughs> kinds. Use what you have, but um, if you're in the market, this is a fun option and these are uh, relatively affordable. So I will link these in the video description box below. Um, if you expand under the video and scroll down, uh, that's where you'll find the links. But um, there's these beautiful jewel colors, so I'm going to move on to those next. And I'm just kind of squeezing out some water and cleaning the water brush on my stamp chamois there off to the left. So here I'm just going to do the same thing, get some water in them. Um, and these do show up pretty well on the white. You may notice sometimes um, on white cardstock or white uh, watercolor paper that the, uh, you know, metallic watercolors don't necessarily show up the best and you know they don't stand off quite as much as they do on the black but these have quite a bit of pigment in them so I think that's kind of the clincher in terms of how much you spend on your watercolor or your metallic watercolors uh, the ones that cost more tend to typically be more pigmented so I would say these are probably more middle of the road. Um, they're not super expensive, but they're still a nice high quality, maybe a little bit more than you would find, you know, even cheaper still in like a big box store. So just kind of, you know, buy based on, you know, what you're looking for, whether it's something you're actually going to use, um, you know, whether you're just going to freehand paint with it. There's lots of beautiful ways that you can use this stuff, um, especially on like this black color cardstock. I will also link that below. That's something fun to have in my crafty stash. But a way that you could use this on the black that's really pretty. Um, you can heat emboss with like silver or gold. So you could do like a really pretty floral stamp and you could heat emboss it on the black and then come in and fill in um, the image with these metallic watercolors and it's really pretty. But again, as you can see, they do show up on the white very well also. Um, also you can use these for splatters which is what you'll see. I use my little my little tin of Yuli um, watercolors that's really glittery and really um, really pigmented. I'll use those a lot for splatter. So um, but these have really rich vibrant colors. Now I did notice when I went through I was trying to use my heat tool to kind of like speed it along a little bit and you can see I don't know, with the those two reddish orange ones on the left, I don't know if the heat gun kind of messed them up. They just didn't seem quite as saturated after. So I don't know if I kind of did something with the heat. So I would definitely recommend just letting them be and letting them air dry. Um, but I just went through and all of these have just numbers associated, not 
actual colors. So I just wrote those down. So I have these swatch, swatch sheets for future reference. But these are pretty evident what the color is. Um, you may have noticed on some other uh, metallic watercolors that it might not be obvious what color you're dealing with until you get it on the paper. I found that sometimes with the the whites, they'll all look white and then you put them on, you know, a dark colored cardstock and all of a sudden they're like this really vibrant blue or green or something like that. So these are a little different in that way because you can kind of see what you're going to get for the most part. I mean, swatching is always good and fun so you can get the exact um, look that you're going to achieve, but still overall these are pretty easy to determine the purple is purple the blue is blue, etc So here I'm just having a little go having fun playing um, This is how I like to watercolor florals. I really don't overthink it. This is something that you could absolutely um, Overthink and and let intimidate you but I promise if you can see here Well, I keep sticking the brush in the in the gold. I don't know why I keep doing that um, but you can see I'm literally just laying down blobs. There's no talent involved here. So just have fun and play um, and put down blobs of color. And see, look, I did it again. I don't know what is wrong with me. I just keep sticking the red saturated brush in the gold. Well, evidently I want to be working with the gold. And I can see why because look how much that pops. It's so pretty. But I'm just putting down little blobs in sort of flower shapes and guys, I'm telling you, anybody can do this. It's just, I mean, obviously it's not that great. I'm no Christina Werner. She's just brilliant and can paint the most beautiful things. But I just wanted to create a kind of floral-ish card um, and play with these some more. So here I'm just thinking like green. I can't really fit in leaves. So I decided to just kind of loosely go around um, and fill in the spots with green because I feel like if you were looking at it in real life, that there would be, you know, an underlayer of, of green from all the leaves. So, um, again, this isn't that great, uh, but I am pleased with how it turned out and I did have fun playing and, you know, that's what it's all about, right? So I'm just kind of going through and putting sort of leaf shapes around the outside of the perimeter and do stick around. I will show you this as a finished card, um, in just a moment, but I just wanted to show you how I have fun playing sometimes. Um, there are other times where I may be a little bit more deliberate and concise and try and make, you know, maybe a more defined cluster of leaves or flowers or something like that. But I really just wanted to play and had fun turning this into a card. And I think it, I mean, it's not great, but I think it turned out okay. Here's a photo of the finished card. I cut down the panel with um, some rectangle dies from LDRS Creative. It gave it that cool edge and I actually uh, heat embossed some gold with a stamped thanks and added it to a 110 pound cardstock base. So finished the card. I had fun playing. I got to swatch my new watercolors that I got and yeah, it was fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Um, like I said, I'll link everything I used below, but thanks for joining me today. I'll catch you next time. Bye.